Isn't that obvious? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't mean to be glib. You know, it was. I think. I think Chuck Palahniuk is a really unusual, brilliant satirist in a time when we don't have a lot of great satirists. And this was the most unusual combination of kind of highbrow and the lowest of lowbrow. And uh, I also think that the, the the ideas of you know sexual dysfunction into and intimacy is something that's just not kind of talked about very much. And it's certainly not the kind of really painful issues that are underneath all this in a humorous way. And I thought it was really an amazing blend of stuff and I, I just wanted to get in the middle of it. Anybody else? Yeah, you had some uh, spiritual undertones in there. I was curious if there was any religious background you had that grew you to this project and maybe how it affected how you treat it. Okay, smarty pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad's a minister. <laughs> and I and I grew up I grew up around he's a theologian as well at Stanford and, and he studies okay, this is kinda of weird. He um <laughs> He's a historian in, in the in the kind of life of Jesus in the first couple of Roman emperors after. So I kind of grew up with a lot of messianic uh, literature and stuff around, and it always it's always struck me as an amazing story and an amazing idea. And here it, it seems to represent kind of the the idea of the ultimate purity, someone who's wanting some some kind of purity or goodness, and uh, and he is very much also clinging to the opposite. And the idea that someone who hides in a kind of self-loathing. I don't know. I, I was able to connect to that at that point when I found this. No more, though. Anybody else? Here. The question was, uh, was Chuck very involved in the adaptation? In a beautiful way. In an amazing way. Because I, I called him and I said, about, you know, we, we, we bind the rights, and I, I just want to say that before we get off on the wrong foot, I see all the dark stuff, but I see a romantic comedy, kind of a, a triangle with this doctor and, and the mom. And he said, me too, go write. And he said, the only thing I want to say to you is don't be too faithful to the book, which was an amazing thing for a writer to say, especially such a brilliant writer, to someone who hadn't done much. And, uh, and I didn't really listen to him, you know? I thought that was like something he had to say. And that cost me like a year and a half. This was seven years ago that I had that conversation with him. And, uh, you know, the first draft was really kind of too obedient and stilted. And it wasn't until I got just frustrated that I tossed it in a drawer and said, okay, what's, what do I have to bring to this? What, and, uh, and he was right. You know, he talks about it in an amazing way. He says that he, a lot of what he writes, he feels he has channeled stories he's gotten from other people on his book tours. <laughs> and then he writes it. And it's like a chain letter to him that everybody adds to. And he kind of encouraged me to go do another draft. And he was here. He actually just left the other day. And it was nerve-wracking because he hadn't seen it. But uh, he was into it. And the parts he was into it most were the parts I wrote, the parts I added. Because it, it felt, I don't know, it just felt like something new that he had kind of birthed in a way. So I think that's very rare. I think I just hit the jackpot with him. Because he has so much funny stuff that I could kind of take. And, and, and also because he was so generous 